Florida Everglades are one of America's richest biological treasures, but they're in a pretty sorry state. Over the years, the massive wetlands have suffered from overdevelopment and drought. And while droughts may come and go, my colleague Adrian Bashuk looks into real fears that human activity just might be too much for the wetland system to handle. I'm flying in a chopper over South Florida. I'm getting a bird's eye view of its greatest natural resource and its resource most in peril, water. Growing up here on Miami Beach, water was a part of life. I'd go to the beach a lot, sail a lot, and heck, I lived on this chain of islands in the middle of Biscayne Bay. If you take a wider look at South Florida, you can see that four water systems are all interconnected. Basically, a drop of water from Disney World, and, and I'm not kidding, uh, flows southward through a series of rivers into Lake Okeechobee. That fresh water used to then continue perfectly south into the Everglades. This huge 100 mile long by 50 mile wide national park would send along the water into Biscayne Bay and Florida Bay, eventually mixing with the salt water of the Atlantic Ocean. It looks nice on TV, and for centuries it was a tidy, balanced ecosystem. But today, that ecosystem is all out of whack, and the water, the very fabric of South Florida, is in peril. We're looking at Lake Okeechobee, the heart of South Florida. This is the northeast end. Well, um, the lake is actually in uh, bad condition right now. Um, we've gone through a series of extreme high water events and extreme low water events. The day I visited the lake, it stood at 10.2 feet. The average, 15 feet. The reason, a historic drought. To sustain a healthy lake from an ecological standpoint of view for the, for the wildlife and the plants, you would want to um, operate the lake between about 12.5 and 15.5. Here's the thing. While yes, it's the worst drought since 1946, it's an extreme event. Meaning, in the last 10 years, there have been three record high water levels on the lake of 18 feet or higher. The Army Corps of Engineers says that's highly unusual that on record such extreme levels would only occur during a once in 30 year storm event. This means that certain plants are dying. During the drought, fish are dying, causing the gators to look for food elsewhere. Ah, oh, that's a gator, look at that. Can we get a close up, you see the two yes. gators sitting there? <laughs> now, moving south to the Everglades. So this is Dan Coltrane. Dan, how long have you been working in the Everglades for? It's almost 17 years. Seven, I mean, you are the Everglades. Yeah, I am the wildlife in the Everglades. <laughs> All right, we about ready to go airboating? This is my backyard. The water that you're seeing out here, this is actually flowing southward all the way from the big lake in the middle of Florida, Lake Okeechobee. Areas like this, average water depth, two inches to a little more than about two feet. The water goes through the mud here about four to six feet deep, and then you got porous rock, coral, limestone. And we take our water from the bottom. If we take too much water without water on the top, salt water is gonna invade, hmm. which will destroy our whole ecosystem. How does lower water levels here in Lake Okeechobee then affect the Everglades? Well, as we, the... We actually like that sound on TV. It sounds like as the water the levels in uh, Lake Okeechobee drop, um, water is not sent to the Everglades agricultural area. It's not just because of the drought that water isn't getting to the Everglades. A series of man-made canals and development projects over the last 30 years have disrupted the ever so important natural flow. So the southern half of the Everglades is basically dying right now. That's a loaded, <laughs> that's a loaded statement. Yeah. Right? The southern half of the Everglades The southern is part dying. below Tamiami Trail, uh, the natural water flow is non-existent. It's stagnant. You can look at maps of the water flow and you'll see it's all coming down, stops the Tamiami Trail. Water is all stagnant below that. And basically that's what makes the Everglades, it's the river of grass, just as Marjorie Stone Douglas says. And if the river's not moving, it's not a river anymore. You can take a look here. The suburbs have crept 12 miles westward in the last 20 years. Miami-Dade used to stop about here. It's a battle that we fight year after year. Uh, developers are always trying to move for further west. And so yeah, it definitely 
does hinder Mother Nature's job. Um, but Environment Florida and other nonprofits here in South Florida are doing a really good job of pushing back and making sure we're holding the line and not developing further than we need to. Mm. Uh, we want to build up political pressure so when representatives and senators know that we're out here talking to people, yeah. they get kind of scared, want to do the right thing. Still, while their lobbying stopped 12 of 13 newly proposed Western Development projects. A lot of people are giving something around 15 bucks to help the cause. Roads were built long ago, like this, the Tamiami Trail, stopping that natural southern flow. Eight miles from here, we have development. So to hydrate all those people moving west, local government turned to the Everglades to provide even more drinking water. And sometimes even floods the Everglades purposefully because it's not getting enough water from the lake. The conservation is not of the wildlife. The conservation is of the water. All right, we had a thousand people move to South Florida each week. All right, this is South Florida's drinking water. Right here. Yeah, you have like coffee, tea, water, ice around Miami. Just remember that I played in it. The ecosystem is thrown off without the right amount of fresh water. Again, like the lake, fauna die. The 14 endangered species living here become more threatened. I think she likes you. And of course, the gators must alter their way of life. Alligators have been a lot bigger than they were 20, 25 years ago. Back then, your average big alligator was eight, nine feet. Now your average big ones you see are 13 to 15 feet. We are seeing a trend of, uh, of these more extremes. What's the solution? How do we fix it? Uh, to have control over Mother Nature <laughs> would be the first uh, first answer. With well, global warming, yeah, they say that would destroy us. Literally destroy the Everglades. Oh yeah. If the ocean levels rise, it's just going to take a whole bunch of the Everglades, and the mangroves will start taking it back eventually. Do you, you believe in global warming? Oh yeah. Global warming or not. What's the government doing to combat these issues? Well, the Comprehensive Federal Water Resources Development Act, or WERDA, was passed way back in 1986. An aid package for the Army Corps of Engineers and local communities to, quote, facilitate commercial navigation, reduce the risk of damage from floods and storms, and restore aquatic ecosystems. The House and Senate are to amend and reauthorize the bill every two years. However, the proposed $23 billion package that was up for a vote in 2000 wasn't passed until finally September 2007, when the House and Senate finally agreed and billions were to go to the Everglades and the lake. Yet, on November 2nd, the president vetoed the bill, seven years in the making, calling it fiscally irresponsible to greenlight over 900 projects, a system of pork barrel spending. talked about Lake Okeechobee and the Everglades, but these are inland water systems. Let's talk about the 800-pound gorilla in the room, the Atlantic Ocean. When I grew up here on Miami Beach, the water crept into about here. Now take a look where the beach is at. This is Erosion 101, and this consortium of five condos are spending millions of dollars to ship in sand from the Bahamas and sand from Central Florida, literally to fortify their beach. You can see the trucks moving sand up and down the waterfront. The question is, are we literally going to be underwater? I hope not. Who knows what the future holds? One thing is clear. The water across South Florida is in peril.